All right, good deal. Appreciate y'all being here. We uh, uh, ordered up some good weather for the last three days. It's been nice. Um, so we went Monday in shells and went a lot of team. And then yesterday and today went full uh, pads. Um, and we tackled uh, each of the last two days just for certain periods. And, and so a lot of situational work, a lot of 11 on 11 work. And last three days been a grind. And so tomorrow will be a non-practice day. Friday will be um, – we're going to do some, some team stuff, but it won't be as physical. And then Saturday night is will be our first uh, really live scrimmage. And we'll go approximately 45, 50 plays with, with both groups on Saturday night. And then take Sunday off and then come back and repeat basically what we did this week, Monday, Monday Tuesday. First day of school is Wednesday, so we'll make our, you know, this practice will be Thursday of next week, and so, um, and then we'll we'll scrimmage the the following Saturday. So that's just so you know, that's kind of the that's the plan. Uh, we're intentional about being physical in this fall camp, and we'll we'll tackle as as much as they allow us to. And it's uh, I think for us one of the the big the big components for us to be successful is going to be our ability to to be both mentally and physically tough. And so the only thing I, that I know how to do is go out and practice that. And so that's what we're going to do. And so uh, with that, I know y'all want to ask questions about certain people. So Greg, you, you start, I won't take up your time. Uh, just the physical aspect, I, I know it's so early, but do you see any results of, of trying to be more physical, tackling more crisp, any of those things that you can Yeah, so we did, we did a um, kind of a, a good on good tackling drill yesterday and we repeated it today and I thought there was a lot of growth between day one and day two. Um, and what it comes down to is, you know, tack, tackling's two things. The first one's want to, you know, and the second one is, is technique. You got to run your feet and shoot your arms. And so I thought defensively did a lot better job. And offensively, one of the things, the key points on breaking tackles is being efficient with your moves. We say it all the time. Coach Scott says this is best moves are no moves, which means get vertical and and get behind, and run behind your pads. So we've made a point to really drill that. And I thought I thought that's showing up. You know, I think our running backs and, and both running backs and our big receivers are, are finishing uh, plays well. And I thought we tackled. Uh, we did a short yardage and a goal line period today. And I thought that defensively we did. I thought, you know, like um, defensively, like Tyron Bradley on the edge. Like, you know, he's 255, 260 pounds. And he's got a physical demeanor about him. And he showed up today in, in, in our short yard stuff. Even Jared Bartlett at the same position, he's gotten stronger. And you can see he's playing run blocks better than he has before. Um, and then Lee, Lee, I said this the other day about Lee Koba, is I think he makes a big jump this year. And, you know, he's our unquestioned leader over there, and, and he did a nice job getting those guys going today. You know, I thought they were physical today, um, and that was big. You know, he's a big reason behind that. Do you see any separation in position battles that maybe you had as even? Well, yeah, yeah, I think that – I think Anthony Wilson's making a, making a big jump to be ready to play. Um, you know, he's he's won. At corner, I think Jacoby Spells has really looked good through seven practices. You know, and, and my expectation was for him to be better. And he he's made plays. And he's not only made plays on defense, but special teams. Um, Beanie Bishop will definitely – he's pushing. And he's got experience, but he's got personality. He's got good energy, and he's consistent. And so he's been just from having him in the room and then um, going – you know, just talking about some guys. Mike Lockhart made a big-time play today. I think he's starting to separate himself there um, at, at that position. And then Eddie Vesterinian's had a nice camp. Um, you know, as far as the wheel linebacker, we'll wait till we get through Saturday because I think Saturday is going to be the big test there. Um, you know, a tight end, Cole Taylor and Traylon Davis both have separated themselves. Uh, Devin Carter uh, continues to, to do really good things. And I think that um, – you know, as far as just talking about EJ Horton, uh, made a couple of plays downfield today, and so he's given himself an opportunity to play. And then, uh, you know, Jaheim White, he he didn't finish practice today, but given opportunities in eleven on eleven, he's made big plays. Um, any any positions in particular you're asking about? I know quarterback, but um, you know, quarterback because if if Greg didn't, ask, somebody's going to ask. You know, I'll talk about them each individually, not necessarily about 
who's ahead and who's not. Just starting with Nico. You know, Nico making growth um, as a redshirt freshman. Yesterday, if if about halfway through practice, was probably uh, as poor decision making as he's made. And then he was really he able he was able to, to correct it, which I think is a sign of mental toughness. And he's it's and he went a he went a stretch there again where he he made some bad decisions, and then four out of six plays, four out of his next six plays were uh, were explosive plays. And so to see him kind of take an ass chewing and be able to bounce back and and answer, I was really encouraged with that. Um, we did a lot of red zone work today, and it was a little bit of ebb and flow with him, but he made two really big time plays. And so um, encouraged, you know, we got to clean up some of those decision makings or decisions, but encouraged with how he handled adversity because as coaches, you try to create that. You know, we, that kind of happened naturally yesterday, but you try to create it. Um, I think Garrett Garrett had a couple big runs today in a in a team period. We're not tackling those guys, uh, but he had a couple big runs, um, and then he made a, he made really a tight throw down in the red zone. And so we're continuing to rotate those guys, and, and we'll do it. You know, when we're going to name a starter, I don't really have an answer for you. I know y'all don't like that, but I don't really have an answer for that. Um, but we're continuing. They each are getting reps. John Boyle had his best day yesterday too. I should say that. Like, and he can he can really run. And I think he hit he's hit twenty miles per hour. And like he's he's getting better. Do you guys change when you get pads on and, and you start hitting for real? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some, of them, some of them some of them start to hide. Um, and so yeah, it's a different game. You know, everybody everybody likes flag football, but. You bring the contact aspect of it in, it, it definitely separates. Have you heard at all from players that have, because you mentioned intentionally being more physical this year than even compared to last year. Have you heard from players that were around last year that were contributors and their opinions of this? Like, have, have any of them from the locker room saying, man, I like that we're being more physical now? Or Yeah. Um, you know, I, I had a conversation with Lee when we were out at media days and I just told him I was like hey we're going to do a lot more 11 on 11 work and we're going to we're going to be more physical like we're not going to the issue for us is not going to be that we didn't tackle in fall camp that's not that's not going to be a reason why we're not significantly better and and it was my conversation with him was is hey I need buy in from the top you know which he he's a like I always talk about contact he's a seeker of contact so that's that that was music to his ears, uh, but he's done a good job of just enthusiastically selling that, you know, because we have to do it, you know, we have to do it. We were thin last year, we had some injuries, but when you look back, you know, like man, like we needed to, we needed, we got to be more physical. And you're all it's such a fine line. And myself and every other um, college coach, college football coach in the country is dealing with the same deal: was what's enough and what's too much. And you're walking that fine line because you don't want to get you don't want to get your really good players hurt in preseason camp, but you also want to do enough work where they're ready to go. And I'm, I'm I wish that I really I really wish in fall camp like we're making so many changes in our game. I think we got to look at you know with TV and the money and things like that. I think we really need to look at combi combined practice. You know I think it would really be beneficial where you set up your own combined practice. Basketball does it. You know, you can either have two exhibitions or you can have a closed practice um, against another team. And I think it would be better for our game. Our product would be better early in the year if you're able to do that. You know, you see the NFL teams do it where they do back-to-back -back days where they do controlled team things. Um, and I think that would be really beneficial um, for our game. And, and but whether that'll happen or not, who knows. There's information on your part too. Who, what guys can play sore, can play with pain. You kind of get a lot out of that too, right? Yeah, uh, no doubt. Is you know we've we've been talking about like okay, you know who do we have to be to be successful? We've got to be a disciplined football team. We've got to be a team that strains. We've got to be tough mentally and physically, and then we got to be smart. I mean that's who we've got to be for us to be successful. And so when you go through practice and you're playing in practice, like like you're trying to put them in situations that is either going to expose for the good or for the bad. And if it 
if if it's a situation that doesn't go exactly for one side or the other, then you want to try to repeat that and see if we've made growth, you know. And and so without question, we're in the valuation process. And I, and I tell them this, like we're in the valuation process through a week from Saturday. And some of the battles will extend, but for the most part, you know, through next Saturday, we're in the valuation process. And so we're trying to evaluate you situationally. We're trying to evaluate how you handle adversity. We're trying to evaluate how you handle success. Um, all those things. Place kicking. How's you know Michael Hayes? Daniel Michael Hayes had a good day. He had a um, he had a fifty yarder um, at the end of practice on Saturday. Was that fifty one? I don't know. I think fifty one on Saturday to close out practice. He had one today um, where he could end practice, where we were going to do another drill. And uh, he hit it, and that was I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't step it off or anything, but it looked at least forty five to fifty in that range. Uh, so I've been pleased with him. And then Danny King's gonna is, is is putting pressure on him too. You know, Danny King's gotten a lot better. Um, I got I got I got trust in both of those guys. Yeah. Versatility. First of all, I mean, he can kick it right footed, he can kick it left footed, he can spiral, he can kick it where the ball goes, you know, end over end, he can kick it where it spins. I mean, he's got he's got all the the tools from a kicking. He can kick it in the pocket, he can roll out each way. And so he gives us a lot of flexibility from a protection. Um, and then I like his demeanor. You know, he uh, he's got um, he he's not affected by if if he misses a punt or if myself or or somebody gets on him that rolls off of him. Um, he he's handled success. You know, because he was a true freshman last year, not a little bit older. Um, not as old as some of the Australians coming over, but a little bit older. But he handled some success. Um, and so his demeanor and, and the versatility and the type of punts he can kick, and he understands the game. You know, that's the thing that, that probably doesn't get talked about is, like, he understands our protection, so he understands where it's weak, and, and he can help us out as far as how he positions himself, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and, and there's some there's some aspects that are the same. Is you still, you know, you whatever directional punch you're calling, you, he needs to hit that in that direction. So the direction still matters. Uh, we're a team that that really is wants to be a fair catch team. So the hang time is important. Um, the biggest difference is the change of the launch points. You know, like in the NFL, you got the same launch point. That's the rules dictated in college. You know, we've got multiple launch points. And so that's probably the biggest difference between a traditional punter and kind of what they get, what a lot of the college games gone to, certainly ours, is the is the number of, of launch points. Is there value to him playing Australia rules football or rugby and having all those guys around him and being able to operate? Yeah. Is there, is there value in that? Yeah, yeah, it is. There's a, there's a toughness aspect yeah. of it. And he's had to, he's had to perform under pressure. And my daughter, she's in here today, so she's gonna laugh. But like, you you constantly evaluate people that perform under pressure. And you know, you talk about um, my conversation with her was about multiple sport athletes, and she had made a, a question about, well, you know, does it matter that they play? I'm like, yeah, because it means they're athletic. That means they're athletic, and then. I was using uh, Rodney Gallagher as a as an example. You know, Rodney Gallagher had to step to the free throw line to win the Whippeal Whippeal Championship, not once but twice. <laughs> you know, and so he had to do that in front of a full arena. So what that tells me is he can handle pressure. And odds are, like when we go to Penn State, it's not going to be too big for him. You know, because there's going to be 21 other people out there every time he's out there. Where in basketball you got to step to a free throw line and everybody's eyes are on you, you know, and and so I think anytime you can witness people have to perform under pressure, like those are competition reps and pressure reps, and so Ali 
over in Australia had to go and he had these intense competitive reps versus grown men and had to perform, you know, and um, and so I think that definitely counts. Well, showed up in the Oklahoma State game last year. Yeah, he didn't. And, and yeah. that's a great point. That's a great point. And like we used that example the other day and because, you know, this this quote gets overused now, but it's a it's a Navy SEAL deal. And it, it was and it's very true is. You know, you, you basically fall, fall to the level of your training. And so we worked that all the time. And what he did is the snap, only snap he dropped, but he was so calm and it was pouring down rain. It was about 35 degrees. And he comes, circles the ball just like he's supposed to, picks it up, gets it off, you know. And, and so that shows, like, what I was telling Bob, he's really even keel. He doesn't get too up or too down. And so, well, you know, he wasn't one of those guys that dropped it, looking at his hands and beating himself in the helmet. And he just went back, circled it like he's supposed to, and got the ball off. Um, and but that was a rugby move because that happens all the time in that game. Yeah, we are. That, that's a change, right? Yep, that's a change. And so, really twofold. Um, first of all, selfishly, the older I get, the better I am in the morning, so like I have better energy. Uh, and then. Uh, Really, the second thing, we've always done it in the spring. And so the reason we've always flipped that, because we practice in the fall and afternoons, spring in the mornings. And that was due to, to classes. So some, some of the majors you could have, you know, it was easier to get classes scheduled in the morning or afternoon. So regardless of the time of year, they should always be able to hit it in each semester. Um, but really, since COVID, a lot of classes are online. So we're not having those same type of issues. And the winter in the spring is the guys liked it better. And so I just put it out to them um, kind of, I don't know, last February or March and said, hey, uh, we've got a group of older guys that, you know, I'll let them have, let them have some say in, in, in some orders and are in some decisions. So I just put it out and I said, hey, I want you to come. And like um, Patrick, our director of football operations, he's going to come see you one on one and like, so give him what you would like to do. Do you prefer mornings or you prefer afternoons? And give a reason why. And if you don't have a reason, then you don't count. Okay, if you have a legitimate reason, then, okay, we're going to listen to that. And it was overwhelmingly positive in the mornings. And so what we're going to do is, is, and it's a credit to our academic people, some people go in the mornings and they got to be in the building at 530, and we don't start anything till 8. So the schedule that we're on right now in fall camp is the exact same schedule we'll have when school starts next week. Um, and so excited about it. I think it's going to, you know, the, all the science stuff says that, you know, the guys are, it helps them from a recovery standpoint on Saturdays. Now the biggest difference is going to be from a coach planning standpoint where, you know, you practice on Tuesday afternoon, which is your first big practice, usually out there at four o'clock. Now you're going to be out on the field by nine something. So you're losing that seven hours. Now you'll gain it on the back end. Um, but that's that's the – it's really not going to be an adjustment for the players as much, um, but that's going to be an adjustment for the staff. You joke about your, your age and getting, you know, better energy, but, like, players, just for their well-being, too, like academics, it's a lot easier to do academics during getting out of here at 4 than, like, 9 o'clock, yeah. too. Like, so the, the, the football side of it, that's fine, but is there, like, a student welfare thing? Yeah, I, they just like it, you know, and, and I think what they like about it is the hardest things are done first. And so I don't mean the school is not hard, but from a physical physicality standpoint and like and their day gets going and our academic people like it better. And because they see them, their day started and and it just flows better. Um, get, get, keep going, Mike. You know, uh, last week before your off day, you kind of weren't happy about I think urgency is what you said because yeah. it was like a 70 minute practice. You're off tomorrow. Yep. This doesn't sound like it was a light day, and there probably was some urgency. Do you see a difference there, and is that a yeah. positive in the reaction? So I thought today is the day like that's hard. You know, you have three or four times in camp where you go back to back days, and so today, yesterday, and today were really hard. We we're hard physical practices, and I thought we answered today. I was pleased with how we answered. That doesn't mean we play clean football. Like we did a short yardage period and a goal line period, and there was plenty of mistakes. But they weren't um, lack of energy or, or lack of focus. They were just not having those reps. Um, a lot of the seven-on-seven seven and a lot of the pass – you can get reps on that in OTA. 
Um, but you're not getting reps other than in live football for short yardage and goal line. But I thought I thought the guys had really good energy. I think it's a credit to the leadership. If, if you think about, like, who are our people on offense? Well, like, Zach Frazier, he, he's, he's a work – He's a worker, you know. Doug Nestor's a worker. Wyatt Milam's a worker. Devin Carter's a worker, you know. So guys kind of fall in line behind them. And then flip it over on defense. You know, Lee Koba is, like, he loves football. <laughs> he loves the contact. He loves to practice. Like, we're out there. And I said, hey, if we make this kick, practice is over. If we miss it, we're out here. Wow. And he wants to stay, you know. And I'm sitting there, th I'm like, I hope he makes it. So, because we're already got as many reps as I want to get today. Um, uh, but he kind of ignites the defense. And then Aubrey Burks is really growing in that too. You know, and he's he's made a couple – and John John asked me about this yesterday. He's made – Aubrey's made a couple of wild plays um, on Monday and Tuesday. Question to kick off somebody, again, separating there, and then also the return game. What are your thoughts yeah, so those? we uh, – Danny and, uh, and Michael both – um, are probably kicking off better than – and this is not a knock to anybody that's been here, but more consistently hang time and distance than any time over the last four years. Um, and then kickoff return, we hit a couple today. I need to watch them on film. Um, um, Jason Polk and Beanie Bishop are really probably the leaders, and it's going to be a competition. And we're going to do something a little different where we're going to actually do a, some full tackle kickoff versus kickoff return just to see, you know, so – give those guys a chance to really show who can win the job. You mentioned that versatility of playing. Is that something in the future you have to have? I mean, now that you kind of got spoiled by it a little bit? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, 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 like, I, like the, uh, I like being a punt team that really focuses on coverage because you can recruit to it. You know, it's, you're, you're really looking for speed. And so if you can get more free releasers out, then it helps. Um, you know, those, those interior pump bodies are hard to find. Those are those mid bodies that are really hard to find. Um, but on our punt team, we're really built kind of on speed. And so when you have that, you're able to, to move your launch point around. You don't necessarily have to have as big of bodies on that team. So uh, preferably would like to continue in that for sure. Yeah, he's done a nice job. Like he, uh, we always we always start uh, our team meeting right before practice with what we call good football, which is just like really good fundamental plays. And he's been on there the last two days, and so he's growing. You know, he we he's done some inline blocking the last two days, which is something he didn't have to do at university, and he's natural at it. He's really natural at it. Traylon Ray, yeah, he's smooth. Yeah, he's smooth. I thought you were talking about Traylon Davis. I was like, that's an odd comparison. But now you're talking about Traylon Ray. Uh, Traylon Ray, yeah, Traylon Ray is smooth. I like him. He's uh, he's going to be a player. And he didn't get here till late because he played baseball late. Uh, so he's only been here, you know, since the last week of June. Um, but I like him. I think that um, he's long. He's got really good ball skills, natural. And he, he's, he's highly intelligent. He, he played in a very similar – his high school coach – and I known each other for a really long time, and his high school coach was the was the high school coach for uh, the Op Rattlesnakes and uh, and uh, and Op Alabama, and now he's down at North Florida Christian. But they run a lot of the same concepts that we run, and so he came in here kind of ahead of the curve, and he's going to be a good player. Matter of if, you know, and it's not out of the question he'll play right uh, right away. Yeah, we'll start that. So, really, as coaches, we've kind of already done the, the Penn State stuff. You know, that's kind of what you do in, in May. And it's one of the really good things about not going out recruiting in May. We do the care about myself doing the recruiting, but, but you get to get ahead on some opponent stuff. And then you go back and do that same thing in July. So, we've done a lot of the prep work for that. And then what we do is kind of a lead-in is during our walkthroughs in the evening – is we go opponent defenses and opponent offenses and kind of work, you know, whatever our install of the day was. We practice live in the morning. We kind of walk through it versus our opponent looks. And so then we'll do – we'll work on a mock game week after that second scrimmage on a Saturday. And that's when – that'll be kind of like half cleaning up 
like what we want to put in for the season and then getting ready. And then I guess that Tuesday is kind of when I got like start turning the music up and uh, I'm gonna have to listen to all these people around here. But listen, I'm not trying to be hateful. Like we got to we got to play the music loud so we can get ready for Penn State. I already know the emails are going to come from the neighborhoods, but I apologize, apologize in advance. Are you going to do 730 practice for every Saturday scrimmage? Uh, no, we're trying to move. We're going to try to move the, those scrimmages around for game times. Yeah, we got a couple nights built in, John, um, just to get used to practicing their lights. Yeah, um, you know I think those regional rivalries are important. They, uh, yeah, they're they're the pit game is uh, I think should be played every year, and I've, I've said that all along. I think the the pit game should be played every year. I think it's um, it's one of the best rivalries in all of college football, and so we should play that every year. Um, and it makes it hard to play those other regional games. And, you know, and I've, I've spoken on our, you know, our, what's the best for the program, not necessarily what's best for me, but what's best for the program As I think you play that pit game, you pay, play a G5 at home, you play an FCS at home, and you play, um, you play you're going to play nine league games, which should give you seven home games every year. And I think that's the best opportunity for success. I think it's the best uh, for our fan base to have a seventh home game every year. And it, it allows you the opportunity to really build some momentum early in the year. And so um, I think – so I'm all in on the, the backyard brawl. I think it's great. Um, those other regional rivalries is I think it's hard to play both. You know, I, I think that's um, – and that doesn't mean that that Virginia Tech – those two games were awesome. Like, it was a great home environment here. It was great going down there. Um, the Penn State game, you know, we're, we're meeting that thing head on. We're excited about it. Um, but I don't think it's in the best interest to play both those games in the same same calendar year. Okay. Thanks, Cody. Yep, thanks.